little bit about the Guild of Music Supervisors. Um, I am not a music supervisor. I'm a composer and musician. So uh, that means I am not a member of the Guild. I am a friend of the Guild, but I was manager for four years. So I got to really see uh, what was happening and all that the Guild has to offer um, and got asked a lot of questions over and over again. So I proposed the idea of this panel so that we could um, see where the Guild is at today under our new leadership, which we're going to hear from in a minute. Uh, President Lindsay Wolfington and Vice President Heather Guibert. And just hear from some of our top committees and committee chairs to hear what's going on, what they're working on, what their goals are for 2024, if, if they are looking for work, um, support from members or if they're open to some help from Friends of the Guild. Um, and yeah, what all is going on under the hood at GMS. So. Without further ado, we have a lot of content to cover today. So I'm gonna hand it right over to our president, Lindsay Wolfington. Hi, thank you, Angela. And thanks for the idea to put on this panel. Um, this was Angela's brainchild. Um, happy 2024, we're so excited you're here. Um, the Guild is a nonprofit advocacy group promoting the craft of music supervision over all medias, and we are also an educational and professional resource for music supervisors and other people working in related fields, fields across the media spectrum. Um, last year, I attended both the awards and our education conference, and I left both events with a smile on my face feeling I love this community and I was actually invigorated from both of them, which is part of the reason um, I decided to take on the mantle of president. Um, I wasn't always involved in the guild. I was growing my business and having kids for a while. And a couple of years ago, I ran for the board and got voted in. And um, as part of that, dove into working with the education committee. Um, I have been a professor of music supervision since 2009. So education and kind of mentorship is something I've always been passionate about. Um, working with uh, the education committee and putting on virtual panels and our conferences is a ton of work, but super gratifying. I got to connect with colleagues who I maybe didn't know before. I felt we got to amplify newer voices and I got to connect with our larger community, members, associates, FOG, and you guys are all awesome. So I hope that anyone looking to get involved has a similar experience to um, what I've had getting involved with the Guild. Um, one little note, we are a small but dedicated staff. So um, we are super appreciative of people who raise their hands to get involved, volunteer at our events, or even just suggest a panel. Um, just please be patient with us as it does take some time to, you know, weed through all those um, hands, figure out where the need is and make connections. Um, so bear with us. Um, March 3rd is our awards this year. We are gearing up for it now. It's going to be super fun and excited, exciting. It's our biggest fundraiser of the year, and it's also our biggest night to promote and celebrate our craft. Um, so you can also help by buying tickets and coming and by buying tickets in a timely fashion and also coming and, and that goes for members and FOG. Um, FOG and people who want to be FOGs can buy tickets now. Member tickets go on sale after February 13th. So that is it for now. We hope to see you there and make 2024 a great year. Thank you guys. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm glad you mentioned the awards. And um, if you're paying attention to the chat, Olivia and Mandisa are dropping links in the chat. So you can um, keep up with that and just check out as, as we're discussing. Um, yeah, you know, the awards was the first place that I volunteered and got connected with the Guild. So I highly recommend it. It looks like it's a team of 100 people when you look at the GMS awards. It's like 10 people. So just, just so people know, it's when Lindsay says it's a small team, it's a tiny, tiny team. Um, and we're going to meet some of them in a little bit. I'm going to hand it over to Heather Guibert, Vice President. And Heather's going to share a little bit about membership as well. Thank you so much, Angela, and hello to uh, all for coming. We're so happy to have you here. So um, thrilled to be, you know, now Vice President of this organization. You know, Lindsay and I are still a uh, Still making making moves, still learning some things, and doing the best that we can. But I'm uh, mostly here today to 
give you a little bit of insight into membership, which is, you know, obviously a, a huge and foundational element of as to the Guild of Music Supervisors. That's that's what we're here for. So the membership committee is made up of GMS members who work across multiple medias. Uh, their primary role is to review the membership applications we receive and make determinations of kind of which membership level is most appropriate for each applicant. Um, we always encourage any music supervisors, coordinators, assistants, and those who love them uh, to apply. Um, those applications are reviewed by the group during monthly meetings. It can take um, often, you know, sometimes depending on when you get your application in, it might get reviewed in a few days, but it can take probably on average a month or two for your application to be fully vetted. So as Lindsay intimated at the top, please be patient with us. We're doing the best that we can with uh, the small group of folks that we have. And, you know, everyone on our membership committee is a volunteer doing, you know, putting in the time to make sure that uh, they're being diligent in those assessments. So a quick kind of overview of our four membership levels. Um, and I think our team will put the, the links in the, in the chat for you to see in greater detail. We have freelance, corporate, associate, and legacy. Um, there is also, of course, um, the Friend of the Guild, which is a subscription. It is not a, a membership level, but it's a really great way to stay connected and support the Guild. Um, some insight into each one, which, of course, you can get more info directly on that page and even submit directly through the links on the, the website. But in freelance are generally independent music supervisors who've been working in the business for a while and have accumulated enough credits to to reach that level the specifics of each of those credits for each of those media is provided in the links um then we have our corporate level which is individuals employed full-time in the role of a music supervisor at a corporation whose primary purpose is not music supervision um some examples of that are like if if you're at a film studio, TV studio, or network production company, video game, trailer house, advertising agency, um, those folks would qualify in the kind of corporate sector. Um, then we have our legacy, which is kind of awarded to those who've had extensive careers and spent many years fulfilling the role of a music supervisor uh, in a freelance or kind of corporate capacity. And it's specifically designed for those who are kind of retired or kind of semi-retired, kind of no longer actively music supervising, but have left an indelible impact on the craft. And then finally, we have our associate level, which are either kind of active music supervisors who don't yet have enough credits to qualify at the freelance or corporate level, um, or music coordinators, music assistants. Um, that's the, the kind of qualifying level for you when you're kind of building up your insight and knowledge and experience in the craft of music supervision. Um, it also includes professionals working directly with music supervisors, such as folks who um, are experts in music clearance and mostly work in that capacity. Um, one of the the other kind of big roles that uh, the membership committee has is uh, they're involved in kind of updating membership level qualifications and on implementing any new guidelines or procedures, you know, we're in a changing and evolving media landscape, so the rules for qualification can be uh, adapted. And sometimes as we're reviewing applications and we're seeing different trends, it will give us insight into how to make adjustments to our guidelines to make sure that we're kind of moving in the right directions as well. So one of the new procedures that's been implemented is a credit checking policy, wherein all members are required to submit updated credits every two years to maintain their membership status. This is really designed to help us ensure members are in the most appropriate membership level, and it facilitates any necessary like level changes as members are kind of moving up the ladder and getting more experience. You can always make a separate ask and request for a level change, but we found that this is a really easy way and organic to, to make sure that people are being reassessed every two years. And, you know, sometimes folks might have, you know, be at the associate level and they've earned a lot of credits, but they forget to expressly ask for that level change. We want to make sure if you've done that, like you're getting all the additional benefits of being freelance or corporate that kind of comes with that. So, that's my general spiel. Um, I'll be happy to try and answer any questions I see in the chat. Um, but, you know, membership, such an essential part of the guild. We we love our members. We love our FOGs. And we'd love for anyone who isn't one already to to apply. 
Thank you, Heather. Before I let you go, because this was so confusing for me when I was just getting started with the guild, can I do a speed round with you? And you just tell me what this person would land potentially as a- I'm on the hot seat here. Are you ready? ready? I'll do the best I can off the top of my head. I'm a composer, but I want to uh, be connected to the guild. FOG. I am an aspiring music supervisor, but I only have three or four credits in the most recent two years. Most likely associate. I'm a music supervisor, but I work for um, a studio like Netflix. Uh, most likely uh, corporate, but possibly associate. I am. Um, I own my own music supervision company, and I music supervise full time. Uh, either freelance or associate, depending on the, the qualifications. I'm 95 years old, and I was a big music supervisor in the 70s and 60s. Thank you for your indelible impact. You are a legacy member. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. You nailed it. <laughs> always you. a little squish there, but yes, that's that's the basic breakdown. Of I'm always going to have an asterisk. Okay, that's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, it's really my pleasure to um, introduce our new operations manager, Lisa Liang. Uh, so we're going to hand it over to Lisa next. Welcome, Lisa, and thanks, Heather. Thank you all. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm excited to be the Guild's new operations manager and to be working with a wonderful group of people, which hopefully you'll join in one of the various ways I'll just touch on shortly. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of how to stay informed on the Guild, how to get involved, and the benefits of being a friend of the Guild. The best way to stay informed about the Guild is to become a member or friend of the Guild or FOG. And you can also follow us on social media. And we're popping links in the chat for all of that. You can also follow our calendar to keep track of what we're up to. And that link is being dropped in the chat now too. And we encourage everyone to volunteer and you can fill in the volunteer form at the link we're dropping in the chat. Our wonderful core team consists of myself, Lisa Liang as the operations manager. Amber O.K. is our executive assistant. Colleen Carney is our managerial assistant who manages the newsletter, among other things. Marshall Kolbars is our operations coordinator. Jewel Zucker is our membership coordinator. Hunter George, who you'll be hearing from soon, is our sponsorship and outreach director who has the following people on his team. Lisa Denae, Juliana Garcia, and Megan Ling. Please reach out to sponsorship at guildofmusicsupervisors.com for any questions related to sponsoring the guild or FYC content. So in addition to our core team, we have various committees that have chairs and coordinators overseeing them. Some committees for which we currently need more volunteers are the events committee. The sponsorship development committee is looking for folks with fundraising experience, particularly with grants or nonprofit development. So please reach out to sponsorship at guildofmusicsupervisors.com if you have grant writing or other fundraising experience. The marketing team would also like help, so please fill out the volunteer form in the chat with your skills if you're interested in being on our social media team or have experience in marketing, PR, graphic design, or editing skills. And other committees that the Guild has are the DEI committee, which runs our mentorship program. You'll be hearing from Kelsey soon the Benefits Committee, which advocates for equity in the industry, our Membership Committee, you just heard from Heather, the Education Committee, the Awards Committee, and its various subcommittees, the Craft Committees, which uphold the awards nomination process, and regional committees, such as GMS East and GMS Brazil, which you will hear from today. Each of these committees has member chairs, as well as volunteer coordinators. If you're passionate in any of these areas, please email admin at guildofmusicsupervisors.com after you've filled out the volunteer form. If you're interested in helping with a specific event like the awards or anything else, please specify what you're most interested in. The more detailed you are on the form, the better. And uh, a little about Friends of the Guild or FOG. Friends of the Guild subscriptions get our monthly newsletter as well as exclusive invites to events and panels, plus discounted tickets 
and opportunities to participate in our special events, such as the awards and conference. If you're an existing member or friend of the Guild and also have membership at our participating partner organizations, you can get a 10% discount off your dues. That includes the Production Music Association, Women in Film, and the California Copyright Conference. If you're part of an organization that would like to be included in the cross-organizational discount, please reach out to admin at guildofmusicsupervisors.com. Members and friends of the Guild, if you want to post something on our job board, that's in the members portal. Everyone else, you can email us at admin at guildmusicsupervisors.com to ask us to post something on the job board for you. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for your attention and your interest. And I will now pass the figurative mic back to our moderator, Angela. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so what I gathered is when in doubt, email admin at guildofmusicsupervisors.com. <laughs> Perfect, exactly. Yeah, um, so it's wonderful to hear. I know the events committee is new and we're gonna hear a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but that's that's one place where people can jump in if they're really excited to to get involved. Um, I know that w there's been some frustration from f people who have volunteered again and again, and we have not been able to see their hand or put them in, into place right away. And I would just maybe encourage people here that your 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 form that you fill out it's got a shelf life. So if you haven't filled it out in a little while, ping it again. And we're always looking for people that are that are um, interested and we'll do our best this tiny team this overworked team will do our best to to get you plugged in and uh, building relationships with people in this guild um so thank you lisa we're so excited to have you uh leading the team here and i'm going to hand it over to our dei committee chair kelsey mitchell what's up kelsey how's your voice um voice is doing better thank you so much um, hi, I'm Kelsey Mitchell. Um, I'm the head of the DEI committee. Um, I'm a music supervisor, mostly for film trailers. Um, the DEI committee, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, we are we are working towards um, uplifting the voices of marginalized folks in the field of music supervision. Um, so we do we we do panels. We do one panel at the education conference every year that aligns with our values. Um, and we we um, liaison on other people's panels. We do special initiatives. The, the main thing that we do is we run the uh, mentorship program. We've already completed three rounds of it and we should be embarking on our fourth in the near future, but our mentorship program is basically where we pair an aspiring supervisor with a working supervisor, an experienced supervisor, um, and have them uh, have them be mentor and mentee for uh, a period of time. We've been doing six months, and there's a curriculum provided, and it's it's purely for the benefit like the benefit of the uh, mentee. It's in no way, shape, or form an in in internship or a job or a guarantee of a job. It's it's purely for education. Um, and that is our main initiative that we've been um, we've been doing. And the guild will announce when our next round is up and when applications are open for that. Um, and so just keep keep up with the guild in order to learn. And also in terms of um, what my committee needs, my committee needs um, working music supervisors to volunteer to mentor um, because the more working music supervisors that are available to mentor, the more mentees we can take on. You know, often we have to say no to a lot of people. And I, I'm truly only limited by the amount of supervisors that are willing to dedicate their time. Um, and yes, we do also need um, volunteers for in committee as well, because it is it is um, a large job reviewing all these op applications. But um, that's pretty much it, unless you can think of anything else, Angela. Thanks, Kelsey. I know the mentorship program is such an undertaking. It's one of the most fabulous things that I've seen the Guild do, um, but it's a ton of work and you get hit with so many applicants compared to the number of mentors. What yeah. are some of the skill sets that you could use to support this effort? Um, in terms of having another volunteer or what do you- Yes, people, people that want to help with the mentorship program. 
Yeah. So what what is really helpful is um somebody who is is just hyper hyper organized. But also what we find is um is helpful is is somebody who is and I don't know if this is the right crowd for this, but somebody who is already uh, familiar with a lot of the this working supervisors and so they can be like, oh, I know this person works in this field and so they're going to be good for this person because of the X, Y, and Z. So sometimes the the internal intel is like so, so helpful so we can do these yep. characters appropriately. But in terms of um, other than that, it just takes like a hyper vigilance and organization because we do it all through these like fastidious Google Sheets yes. <laughs> and data collection. Oh my gosh, if anybody's good at like data collection and data analysis, that would be enormously helpful because I, otherwise I'm just manually doing the math on these things. Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know how to do that. Yeah. So somebody who knows the industry, somebody that's really organized and just can help us get this information out and um, digested so we know what yes. to do with it. That sounded about right. Okay. Yes. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Kelsey. Uh, really appreciate your help and everything you do. And um, I hope you'll get hit with some good volunteers here and mentors. Oh, how many, mentors. how much experience are you looking for? For like a mentor? Oh, so, a men so for liability reasons, we want to make sure that the mentors are members of the guild. Okay. Whether or not it's freelance, corporate or associate isn't a problem, just not fog for the mentors. Yeah. Um, and they just need to be a member of the guild just so that we um, can, you know, sleep, About sleep sure. better at night. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. Well, I hope if you're a working supervisor, you will consider that, especially our GMS members. Um, the reviews have been rave about the mentorship program and everybody that's been involved. So I hope you'll consider being a part of it. Um, thank you, Kelsey. We're going to bring it over to um, OG HG, Hunter George the uh, head of sponsorship and uh, hear, hear what you guys are looking for and what you're working on this year. Thank you, Angela. Um, yeah, so my name is Hunter George. I uh, am probably the longest standing um, employee of the Guild. Uh, I'm going on my 10th year this year, which is exciting. And um, I have over the years seen many different uh, roles through this this Guild and, and uh, I'd say in the last five years, I've been more focused on um, our fundraising efforts, sponsorships, partnerships, and our relations with um, with those partners, um, as well as some international things that we do uh, with different countries and um, our other guild counterparts. So um, one of the things that we do in terms of partnerships uh, and what we look for is uh, we have a few different uh, types of partnerships. One would be our um, annual partnership, which is uh, designed for year-round activity um, and, and benefits throughout the year, uh, which uh, really include uh, our two tentpole events, which is obviously we have our award show coming up, and I'm sure we'll talk in depth about that today. Uh, that's coming up in March. And um, our conference, which we have um, moved into the uh, August month or, or late summer. Um, the awards is an event that usually sees around 1200 people and the conference is an event that sees about, I think I think last year we saw about 800. Um, and so it's a really great way uh, from uh, companies that are interested in the sync community, meeting music supervisors, um, and getting your a lot of your catalogs or some of your music technology uh, companies in front of the, the people that are working at the top in music uh, for media, whether that be music supervisors or um, we also have you know a, a wide community of studio executives and um, licensing professionals as well as with uh, the greater reach of our friend of the guild goes out to music editing um composers music producers um and managers so on and so forth so um and i think we can also break down what fog is and and uh but it's pretty much anyone who's working in this space so um the the why of it all uh why would you sponsor um and we also have just to, to bring up a second point too is we have just event-based uh sponsorships or partnerships where Maybe the annual isn't um, particularly your um, business interest. However, it does allow you to have tickets and access to these events throughout the year. Uh, but maybe you're just interested in one event or or an, an off chance sponsorship. 
uh, which would give you access to maybe our awards, ticketing, or uh, branding at the, the event. We also have kind of those opportunities available. Uh, and then the third tier that we offer is a, um, we, we do uh, have grown a lot since I think probably 2016 in the four-year consideration um, realm. So film studios, uh, entertainment studios that are actively promoting the works of supervisors that work on the projects that we all know and love uh, are actively interested in promoting um, things for Emmy consideration, Grammy consideration, our own GMS awards and, and, other, um, and other kind of affiliated uh, promotional efforts for different awards campaigns. So that's something that we typically will feature in our, um, our newsletter or e-blasting. Uh, we also have event programs uh, and, and also we do panels throughout the year that are uh, focused on kind of some four-year consideration efforts. Um, so the why of it all, uh, why, why would you be uh, as a company interested in participating and partnering with us or sponsoring with us? Um, the first thing to know is we have around 1400 plus active members and subscribers. Um, so it's a great way to put your brand in front of all of those um, actively work, uh, working professionals. Uh, and then I already mentioned the attendee uh, levels, 800 at the conference, uh, and I think 1,200 at the awards last year. Uh, hopefully we see around that this year. Um, and then as well, we have about 1,400 uh, subscribers, almost 1,500 subscribers on our newsletter. So um, all of that is potent promotional um, efforts, uh, but you will also be a brand alongside all of the top uh, music uh labels film and tv studios uh including you know like disney netflix warner brothers warner brothers records um and then we have some really great you know universal production music paramount um peer music uh all of these great brands that um have have just supported us over the years all the pros bmi ascap um, BMG, EA Games, all of them take a hand in supporting this nonprofit and supporting the works of these supervisors to uh, advocate for the, the craft of what, what we do. Um, and so it's a great way to also have your brand, especially for emerging companies, to be associated with all of those other, other companies. Um, our events are very potent networking experiences, as I'm sure many of you guys can attest to. Uh, where we do um, educational gatherings or awards gatherings. There's usually some type of mixer or component that um, whether it be a tentpole event or just a smaller kind of town hall or something along those lines. Uh, and so we ha oftentimes have these opportunities to partner with, with companies to put those together. And so it's a great way for everybody to um, meet each other and, and hopefully foster some uh, longstanding business relationships. So that's yeah. the long and short of uh, what we do in sponsorship. We are actively looking for partners. We are actively hungrily fundraising for this very expensive award show coming up in 60 days. Uh, and that's wow. you know very, very uh, nerve wracking for us. Uh, but uh, and then as we see with the cost of inflation and all these things end up costing more and more every year. And we would love to deliver a very uh, elegant and beautiful celebration of, of the works of supervisors. Uh, and so it, it really takes um, partners to make that happen. Um, we're looking for also brands that aren't record labels and aren't libraries and uh, film studios that may be uh, music technology. Um, hardware, software companies, um, food and beverage brands, all of those can have a home and a place in our uh, ecosystem. So if you are interested, um, please reach out to sponsorship at guildofmusicsupervisors.com and we can um, send you more information on what a sponsorship is, what, what it gets you and um, the types of uh, activations that we will do in a given event. Thanks, Hunter. Um, I know pretty soon we're going to be hearing who the nominees are for the GMS Awards, um, which every year the GMS Awards just get, continues to gain clout in the industry. Um, and there, I just wanted to put it out there that there are FYC opportunities for those uh, nominees. Yes. Talk to your studios and um, make sure that you, everybody hears and knows about your fantastic nominated projects. Um, 
So thank you, Hunter. And also shout out, I know Lisa Dene is on our sponsorship team. She's also on this call. Yes, and they Jolene keep the lights on Megan. here. So thank you, Hunter. And thank you so much to the GMS uh, sponsors, some of whom have sponsored for decades. So we really appreciate you and um, your continued support. My East Coasters, where are you at? If you're on the East Coast, please drop it in the chat. We have representative here. Um, are you in New York, Sarah? I am in I'm New York. I'm from New York, so I'm, I'm excited to have you here. <laughs> this is Sarah Tembe Tembekjian, and she's going to uh, talk about two committees that she's representing today. That is correct. I'm in New York. It is dark outside. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Angela. So then thank you so much for everyone for joining. This is a fantastic turnout. It's nice to see all these faces, some familiar and some new. So um, yes, yeah, so I'm Sarah Timbekti and I'm a music supervisor. I predominantly work in advertising and my involvement in the Guild, I'm involved in a number of committees, membership, um, historically been uh, the point person for GMS East, uh, which I'll speak about in a minute, but I'm also here today to talk about a new committee called the Events Committee, which uh has been mentioned a couple times because it is brand new and we do need some more people involved but um i'll tell you a little bit about what our goals are which is um to have a kind of a central place to uh oversee all of the events that the guild is putting on throughout the year um a lot of energy and a lot of brain power goes towards the tentpole events in throughout the year, and there are definitely dedicated committees to manage those elaborate and comprehensive events. So the awards show, um, the education conference, um, which we'll speak about. Uh, I'll pass to my colleague Amanda to talk about that in a little bit, um, and also uh, the Mondo conference, which is the primary focus of the East Coast Committee, which I'll get to um, in a moment. So these are kind of like examples of major tentpole events that the Guild uh, runs annually. But there are many more days in the year and many more opportunities for us to gather and build community in different ways. So that's really been um, the main kind of impetus for us to get together this new events committee to try to um, increase the number of opportunities for us as a community to get together and to meet each other, whether it's um, in person, <laughs> but also, you know, virtual is going to be part of our lives moving forward, right? So it's, it's not off the table entirely to come up with virtual events. But um, the main really kind of goal for us this year is to increase the number of uh, social events that the Guild is hosting, whether it be in LA, in New York, or also in other territories, other cities um, in the US. And if you're outside of the US, we'd love to hear from you too, um, because we know that music supervision happens globally um, and our members are represented globally as well. So um, some examples of events, I mean, you know, social events outside of the tent pole arrangements, it could be as simple as hosting happy hour at a bar um, nearby where we invite members, we invite FOG. Um, it could be an event that is dedicated specifically to FOG, maybe, maybe perhaps a more uh, conversational component um, where there's like a Q and A, a back and forth. Um, there could also be um, activations at uh, conferences or other festivals. So if you have a connection to someone who is hosting an activation at South by, and you think that it, there would be a great opportunity to have music supervision presence there, um, which we do, I think that we all think that would be a really excellent idea. Um, and you have a connection, let's talk about it because it's kind of a no-brainer, right? So um, it's a this is a really amazing foil, the events committee, to invite anyone who would love to get involved 
um, to help host an event uh, to kind of propose an idea and run with it uh, with our support after some discussion and and kind of nuts and bolts uh, ideation. Uh, so yeah, so we encourage you to really reach out to us. We, we'd love to hear from you if you have uh, any thoughts or would like to get involved for a one-off event or perhaps for more. Um, so I'm going to pivot now to the East Coast Committee specifically just to talk about a little bit about what we do on the East Coast. So the East Coast Committee is really a representation of the music supervisors that are based uh, on the East Coast. So a lot of our uh, members on the committee are primarily based in New York. Uh, that's just based on the fact that uh, the per capita number of music supervisors on the East Coast, it's the hub is in New York, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't welcome new members from say Atlanta, Nashville, Chicago um, to come and sit with us and, and chat. Um, so the main event that the GMS East Committee runs every year is the Mondo Conference, the GMS Day of Programming within the Mondo NYC Conference, which is, um, if anyone remembers the days of CMJ, uh, which was for college radio heads like myself um, back in the day, G CMJ was like the place to be right in New York. It was like the South by of New York. Um, the last year of that festival was in 2015 and the, the organizers of that festival decided to put on a new festival called Mondo. So since 2016 to now, Mondo has been kind of a, a New York South by, so to speak, where music and technology discussions occur. And Guild has been involved for I think seven years or so. Now it's been it's been a it's been a while. So um, we have a dedicated day of programming, and the East Coast Committee really focuses entirely on uh, or as much as as much brain power as we can to to host the best day of programming for Mondo. Um, it's topical the the panel discussions are, revolve around um what we feel as a committee are the most important of that year so um how music supervision interacts with ai how uh you know what what are we looking for in the future for music and technology and music supervision but also sometimes there's just general panels that we propose as well that aren't so technology focus. It's kind of an opportunity to cover a lot of different ground. Um, so that is has been the primary focus of the GMS East committee. Um, and again, really would love to hear from you. If you are based on the East Coast, definitely reach out. Um, that admin GMS email is probably the best catch-all. We don't have a dedicated GMS email so um just they'll get it to you sarah they'll get yeah, it to you <laughs> send it along and let us know where you're based and then we can talk about it and um i'd love to hear from you so thank you sarah um i did see that they had already announced the dates for gms for, for mondo 2024 so mondo is a longer conference of, of three or four days um and that's happening october 15th through 18th this year and usually am i right gms takes over a day it's usually that Thursday, right? That's right, yeah. Usually the Thursday. So GMS yeah. Mondo. Yes. And um, we give some discounts to members and friends of the Guild. I was able to attend for the first time this year, and it was I was really blown away. It was fantastic educational content. A lot of it was ads focused for, for our folks that work in ads, um, which we don't get so much of in LA. So it was really nice. I highly recommend it, especially New York people. Um, look for your... FOG and member discounts that we send through through the main GMS channels. And um, Sarah DJ this last year. I don't know if you're going to have that pleasure again, but it was really a, a highlight experience for me. <laughs> so glad. thank you, Sarah. Any last things about GMS East or the new events committee before we um, 
hand it over to Amanda for education. Um, no, no, not at all. Just that we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to get involved in, in a big or small way, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sarah. I'm really excited about this events committee. Um, we have fallen off a little bit of, of having regular events. I saw in the chat, somebody asked, are events for members or friends of the guild or both? And the answer is it depends. Sometimes the guild does have members only events. Sometimes um, it's open to the entire uh, community of subscribers and members. And our tent pool events, the big conference and awards, those are ticketed for both. And you do get a discount if you're a friend or a member. So I'm going to hand it over to Amanda, who has been spearheading our educational uh, education committee these uh, last two years and has helped put on a huge conference. So take it away, Amanda Creek Thomas. Hi, I'm Amanda Creek Thomas. Um, like Hunter, I think I'm coming up on my 10 years volunteering in various capacities for the guild. Um, yeah, membership, awards, events, education, like oh, a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, like as Angela said, the last year I was part of the first couple conferences and then those kids, they really get in the way. And so about last year, I got roped in back into the conference world and worked on the last conference. And from there, you know, we we wanted to sort of like one of my personal goals was and the committee's goals was getting back to a uh, more regular uh, cadence or at least exploring having more educational type events for members and friends of the guild in the new year. Um, and of course, we have the conference coming up. Um, and in, in addition to that, the, you know, we have a now more of a year round education group as well as a more conference specific group. And so we are work, we are sort of a subset of the events committee, um, just trying to make sure we're always keeping balance with like, maybe this month is education, maybe this month is social, maybe this month is members, maybe this month, month is Friends of the Guild. Um, and again, around our two big, big tent pools, which are the awards coming up and the conference. So um, this year, you know, anybody who is interested in being a part of the education committee, it can be member, you can be a member, you can be a friend of the guild. Um, they're sort of a, do you want to be a part of this year round? Or, or you do you really want to be focused on our big conference, which again is going to be coming up. Um, there's no date set yet, but we're looking at again late August. And um, also this year, one of the things we've sort of started putting together, it, which would be new, is a, a half day members only educational summit where there's no date set yet, but it may be in the spring. So there's a little bit of separation from our big conference, which will be going on as usual. And we're very excited about um, so ways that we really could use help are like, you know, there's, there's no shortage of great ideas, um, in the guild and from people who are in the community members, friends of the guild. Um, so really like we are open to people who are willing to sort of take that idea and make it a reality and say like, oh, I know this great location that they're looking to do things at where I know I want to, I have this panel idea, I can put it together, this, these are who I would want to ask. And the committee is kind of there to, while sort of keeping in mind the overall needs of the guild and like the amount of work that all of these things take, um, really sort of support and empower people who have a vision and want to want to bring that content to life. Um, and yes, I think that's kind of the headlines. We're working closely with events and we have great things coming up in 2024. And yeah, we are always looking for, for people who are willing to, to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Amanda. I so appreciate it. I'm a member of the uh, education committee and help to uh, produce a panel or two for the conference every year. And I absolutely love it, but it is a ton of work. She's not lying. <laughs> We lose a little sleep over it, but it always turns out. Um, so somebody yes, in the many chat- hands that, make light work. And like Angela yes. just said, she hopped on and produced two, two panels as part of this big conference. Like it really just takes like saying, I'm gonna do this and then carrying it from start to finish. And then we all work together to make these things great. Yeah, 
Thank you, Amanda. Um, we do see a, a request in the chat for a list of these committees and who can um, be involved, which ones are accepting FOG. So I don't know if um, Mandisa or Olivia, if you're able to jump on that uh, while we listen to We have two more committees to hear from today. Thank you for sticking with us. I'm looking at the number of participants and it's really staying steady. So thank you for stay, staying with us this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to our GMS Brazil representative, who I'm so excited to hear from you, Patricia. Um, GMS is a global uh, organization and um, Patricia is proof of that. And we're gonna hear a little bit about the GMS Brazil committee. Thank you, Angela. Thank you everyone for coming. And it's a pleasure to be here. And today I'm a I'm, I'm music supervisor from Brazil, and I work uh, for about 14 years, and my career is very focused in Brazilian productions. So today I'm here representing the, the, the committee in Brazil, our new uh, committee in Brazil. Uh, I'm the co-chair along with my colleague Mario Dipoi, and, and we launched the, the, the committee last October, in an event in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, a music event. So before talking about the Brazilian goals for the year, I'd like to, to tell you a little bit about the state of music supervision in Brazil, because I think it's important to, to have an idea. So we are still a small number of music supervisors. We, we are less than 10 people um, working, working, really doing music supervision. So although um, I've been doing this for some time, it the, the music supervision in Brazil is still in an early stage. So, and at the same time, the entertainment industry is not in an early stage, it's very mature, especially film, TV and advertising. So uh, I don't have the numbers of to, to uh, 2023, but I have the numbers of the previous year. And in 2022, there were 10,000 film and TV projects in production in Brazil and 40,000 uh, advertising films. So it, it's really huge. And this, uh, the majority of these productions need a music supervisor. So we we really believe in we are growing already because since the arrival of the, the the streaming channels in Brazil five years ago, we started to grow as a profession. But we we believe that it's gonna grow much more in the next few years. So our main goals for this year and for the future in general uh, are two. For now, the one is to to build the community. So gathering more members uh, to the American Guild because our membership is directly here, and and we we want to grow this the sync community in Brazil. There are lot tons of people that want to become a music supervisor, and and other people that already work for uh, uh, a channel, uh, music departments and our music coordinators. So this is growing. And besides this, and the most important is the sync community that is huge. So not only record labels and publishers, but licensing professionals and, and artists and people working in the channels. So uh, we, and we don't have an entity in Brazil that gathers the scene community. So we felt that it was time to have something there. And I think GMS is, is the best answer for that. And actually the music industry is supporting us a lot. And they were amazing with, and, and they are super happy to have a committee in Brazil. So we started with the music community. So I'll go to the, now our next goal that is education which is the most important one for us and will be in the future. So uh, as I mentioned, we are just a few music supervisors, uh, but uh, we, want, we intend to, 
to be to be part of the the main events in Brazil. This is the way for us to start, not making our own events, but participating in other events. So we've we've already participated in this one that was for the music industry last year. We have another one this month that that is Brazil Music Summit. And the most important one is going to be in June in Rio de Janeiro. That is Rio to see. That is an entertainment event that encompasses all the, the areas. And, and we are focusing now in, in doing panels in film, TV, advertising, and games. So uh, for these events, uh, would be amazing always to bring someone from the American Guild or Canada and UK, because these experiences are amazing for Brazilians and even for us. And so this is something when you asked about the help that we could have is to, to have people willing to participate in our panels in Brazil. And besides the panels and the events, uh, we also uh, are partnering with some universities, especially in the film uh, programs, in order to make workshops and classes. We already had one workshop at a public university in a film program and was amazing. So that's it for the year and for the, the, the next, the, the future. That's it for me. That's so exciting, Patricia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I love seeing what's happening with the GMS Brazil committee. Um, I do see in the chat, GMS is in the house and there are some people here who are very excited uh, to chat with you. So I hope that you get some, some strong volunteers after sharing. Um, we have one more committee to hear from today, so I thank you for sticking around. We have Jen Smith, who is representing our benefits committee. Um, Jen, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking till the end. Um, I'm Jennifer Smith. I'm a music supervisor. I'm also one of your um, board members. I'm very honored to be a board member as well as a member. Um, I'm also a member of the benefits committee. Benefits is very important for GMS as well for our community. Um, so the Benefits Committee is a group of music supervisor members. So I know some people, and un unfortunately this is one of the committees that FOGs, um, it's not open to. It's only open to group of music supervisor members. So we come, to, we, we come together about every two weeks and we discuss the issues that music supervisors are having in our craft. That could be work conditions, we're coming up with best practices and standards for the craft. Um, that will also be shared to the community. Uh, transparency is very important to continue the craft forward. So we're working on that. Um, we're also even working on healthcare, right? Healthcare, health insurance is extremely important. Um, we aim to make music supervision, be supervisors be treated fairly. Um, we're working on providing resources that will be available to the music supervision uh, community um, for various things from transparency to what are deal points that are kind of standard to different types of things. Um, we were also involved in bringing attention to our cause, the unionization effort with IOTSE. Uh, the fight is not over for our rights to be taken seriously. So we are continuing towards that. Um, what we need, if you are a member, um, we would love for you to donate your time and join our committee. We have very different subcommittees within there as well. Um, from best practices to transparency. Also, um, you know, I know time, everyone has different levels of time, but also if you have information, information is so important. If you're like, hey, I use this service for prescription drugs that might be, you know, a really great resource for people, please email and let us know if you have experience, you know, with different types of health insurance, or maybe you're a working music supervisor and, you know, something popped up that you're like, what is this? This seems like a weird working condition or whatever. Just shoot us an email for tips. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if you're like, hey, I started to see, you know, in my working conditions, X, Y, Z, or in my deals or how I'm being treated, please let us know because we're really here to create change within our craft and our community. And as the next um, generation comes up, that they're taken care of as well. That's extremely important. And, you know, reach out if you have questions, if you have tips, if you would like to get involved. Again, we are also a, a smaller group as well, you know, just like everyone's volunteers. So if it takes a beat to get back, thank you again for your patience and thank you again yep. for coming forward to help us with this important uh, cause. Jennifer, I know the Benefits has been doing really great work um, all behind 
closed curtain, but you have been really um, doing some fantastic thing for our members um, to make music supervising more sustainable. Well, um, just a few notes to wrap up today. I know we've just tossed a ton of information out at you, um, but we are at the hour. I did want to mention that um, GMS does send out a newsletter the first Friday of every month. You cannot receive the newsletter unless you are a subscriber or a member. So um, that's the only way to stay in communications and get the emails from GMS. Um, we also have a job board um, that just uh, lists jobs that come across the team's desk. If you have one that you'd like to post, or if you have one, uh, if you're interested in seeing that, that is also only available to uh, members and friends of the guild. Um, and lastly, there is a public calendar and um, I can drop that link in the chat, but you can subscribe to our public Google calendar so that the dates show up right on your calendar. Um, and I really recommend um, that you follow GMS across LinkedIn, across uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we're really active on all of those accounts and do our best to share what's happening in the industry and with our members and anything that's pertinent to the world of music supervision on those channels. So thank you, Olivia, for sharing those links. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to put a, a note out to you. If you are an aspiring music supervisor and you are uh, filling out the volunteer form, make sure that you mention that you're a, an aspiring music supervisor because GMS has a special place in their hearts for the folks that are coming up and learning the, the trade or music coordinator or um, and we just, uh, that, that's helpful to know as you fill out the GMS forms. Um, Lindsay, did I miss anything or is there anything burning in your presidential pocket <laughs> that you want to um, share before no, we close I, off today? You know, I'm just, I'm pumping people up about the awards, guys. That's our next, uh, it's only, it's less than two months away. So March 3rd, it's always super fun. Um, you know, it's like sync prom. So come on out. Um, what can and you tell us I, about I, it? I put do, in do the. Do you know where it is? Do you know? Oh yeah, it's at the Wiltern. It's at okay. the Wiltern. Check out our cool new artwork on the website. Um, but yeah, so we are in full production mode, trying to you know obviously uh, nominations still have to be figured out and released. Um, January twenty second, that will be announced. Um, but as you guys know, we have awesome supervisors we're going to be celebrating. So that'll be exciting. We should have some performances. We'll be honoring. Um, you know, some other people in our community. Um, and then I also put in the post earlier, we do have another, like an educational uh, music clearance panel coming up on February 1st, uh, um, uh, sponsored by Trivana. Um, and so we're putting that together and should be releasing more information, but that will be a virtual panel that is only available to members in FOG. So those are the kind of things why you sign up and become a member. Um, and, you know, it's especially help. It can be really helpful for FOG who are wondering what happens once their song gets licensed and also for aspiring music supervisors um, who uh, clearance is a really important part of the job. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Angela. Stellar job moderating. High five. Yeah, high five. <laughs> Thanks to all our committees and, and you guys, it's gonna be an awesome year. I'm excited. Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you jump in and join us at the Guild and uh, we'll see you around. <laughs>